Hey, Slick Talkers, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast, and I know that if you love this show, you'll also love my morning show called Good Morning Hospitality with my co-hosts Michael Golden and Brandy Canale as we spend 30 minutes every Monday morning to dive into the industry's top latest news and trending topics. So go check it out on wherever you find your podcasts at Good Morning Hospitality, and you can live stream with us on Monday mornings on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. Now, I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey everybody, this podcast is sponsored by Open Road Hospitality. Open Road Hospitality is a team of hotel and hospitality experts that are anywhere from maintenance to housekeeping, from housekeeping to front desk. We come in and we'll train your team to enhance your team and guest experience at your property. If you want to check us out more on other services we provide, you can go to openroadhospitality.com and find out everything from there or just reach out to us on the website. We look forward to hearing from you very, very soon. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning back into Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. For this episode, I actually had the pleasure of bringing on an old childhood friend of mine. Uh, We've known each other for over 10 years. He's been a great leader and mentor in my life. Um, from early on when I was a troublemaker to where I am today with the podcast being full-time and doing my business, Open Road Hospitality, full-time as well. In this episode, we discuss his book called Speak With No Fear and what that means and the tools, tips, and tricks he has learned in his career from preaching to speaking in front of hundreds to then tens of thousands of people and what that looks like and what tools you can use in order to start your own podcast to apply to your career as a hospitality professional or just becoming a speaker and doing what you do and what you love. So go ahead and check out all the information in this episode. Get a hold of Mike's book, Speak With No Fear, and I hope you really enjoy this episode. Welcome to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast where we discuss all things hospitality, hotels, and business. You can find us online at slicktalkthepodcast.com and on every podcast listening platform. Thanks so much for having me, Will. Looking forward to diving in to some content and providing some great content for your audience. And it's just fun to connect once again with you. Yes, sir. So for all the uh, audience members listening, Mike Ashley was my pastor and youth pastor when I was growing up in, uh, in early, early ages of high school, which may not seem that long ago, but it's almost 10 years ago. And it's over 10 years ago. It's over 10 years. It's been over 10 years? Yeah, it's amazing. I'm still 20. So it's, I, don't know, I don't know how that happened. Wow, that's crazy. I must be aging pretty quick. <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, it's been great to have um, this conversation. Mike and I have been talking, um, obviously, prior to the show and to the episode. Um, but really, he's just been an awesome guy in my life. And he's done a lot of cool things. So Michael, let's just kind of dive into kind of your origin and your history, and then kind of, um, you know, uh, phase into the book and kind of what inspired you to wrote it or write it. Sorry and um, all the cool stuff in your life. Yeah, sounds great. So really going back to this, I grew up in Mexico and was really the the proverbial fish out of water, did not fit in anywhere. And so that that built up some nervousness, anxiety in my own life when getting up on stage. However, as Will said, I ended up being a pastor. So through a series event in college where I ended up being a college debater and getting trained and having someone believe in me, I ended up getting to the spot where I could stand in front of people feeling confident, not because I was naturally confident, but because I trained for confidence. And so that led to this fascinating time of being a pastor. I was Will's pastor in a small town. That church grew up. I ended up being a pastor at another church. It grew to five locations, went out of California, ended up being one of the preaching team members to regular listeners of over 10,000 people in an auditorium of 3,000 people. And so I had this incredible experience of being on stage from people of like 10 groups, 10 people in a group back in, in Will's day. And then that grew and then ultimately to, to audiences of 10,000 people. So I moved past beyond pastoring and ended up, ended up going into some sales and some executive coaching and business coaching. But along the way, I started coaching a lot of people who were communicators 
Sometimes these were pastors. Other times they were just executives or CEOs or doctors who had presentations to give, a lot of IT professionals. And over and over again, people came up with this dilemma. I just get so nervous when I get up in front of people. And so over the course of time working with people, I, I compiled these seven strategies to help them overcome. And then came the day where one of my clients, who was an author, suggested that I write a book. So what should I write about? I chose to speak, to write on the topic of speaking with no fear. And that is where we are today. I wrote that last May. It's a bestseller on Amazon. It's got over 130 reviews that are positive. Well, 120 reviews that are positive. <laughs> and then I wrote a new book called Write to Speak, which is ultimately about how to write content for meetings that you're going to lead or presentations. And when Will and I were talking about this, because he picked up the book and was a big encourager on that, we said, you know, the reality is that there are some very interesting links between hospitality and speaking. Some of the strategies here, speak with no fear, are really relevant to leading with no fear and really relevant to being the best guest or host that you could possibly be. And so we chose a couple of strategies to bring here today, and I'll touch on some of the other ones, but we'll really highlight a couple of these strategies that will be relevant to you as a leader, to you as a, a hospitality professional, to you as someone who wants to make a difference in the lives of others. Yeah, I have to say, from the moment I got the book, which was maybe, I want to say almost a month ago, um, I've actually, I've, I can't really say I get, okay, yeah, I can. I get nervous whenever I record an episode. Like, even though I've done, you know, a lot of them, and I've been doing it for a while now, um, it still becomes, you know, obviously you are not in front of a crowd, but I've been able to take some of these tools, tips, tricks, chapters, whatever you want to call them, um, and actually apply it to my podcast life as well as kind of the hotel hospitality professional that I am and use it as a, an advantage for kind of on how I interact with my team, how I interact with my clients, and of course, um, my audience out in the podcast world. So um, I think the number one or the first one we're going to talk about is um, it's, uh, it's not about you, right? Right. It's not about you. And so when people get up on stage, what often happens is they instantly start wondering, what are people thinking about me? I mean, think about it. Last time you were leading a team or you were doing a presentation, maybe you were in an interview. And the constant question is, what do they think about me? What do they think about me? What do they think about me? Or do you even think about back in the, the middle school days, right? <laughs> you walk into a room and as a middle schooler or high schooler, you're thinking, what is everybody thinking about me? And so when I used to speak a lot to youth and I did a lot of camps and conferences, and large groups of youth, I was saying, and, and Will was one of the people in these groups. And I would say stuff like, don't worry about what people are thinking about you because they're too worried thinking about what is everybody thinking about them. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that has come true for, for public speaking. That if you will turn it around and think, hey, this is not about me. This is really about the people I'm there to serve. This is about, this is about my audience. If, if you get up on stage and you're thinking, what are people thinking about me? You're going to go in overdrive, just trying to get people's attention and wanting them to like you. But if you start thinking, what can I do to bring value to my audience? What can I do to help people? What, what can I do that will be educational or entertaining or whatever the purpose of your time is? How can I do this for them? Then there's a shift that happens. It's a mental shift that turns into a physical shift because now it's not something that you're just trying to get done. It's something that really you're trying to get done for them. And think about it. There's never one time that you go to listen to somebody that's all about that person. It's never about the speaker. And sometimes I, when I say that, people go, well, yeah, sure, there's, you know, sometimes I wanna go listen to my favorite politician. Well, why do you wanna listen to the politician? Because of what they can do for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, why do you want to go listen to the entertainer? Because you want to be entertained by them. Why do you listen to a podcast? Because you hope this podcast helps you. Mm -hmm. In fact, why do you go listen to a friend or a family member who's, who's giving a speech? Because you want to be proud of them. So ultimately, even then, 
when you're there to support someone else, even then it's about you. So as, a, as an audience member, so as a, as a speaker, you want to turn around thinking, okay, I'm on stage. I have a chance to inform or educate or entertain or sell, but it's not about me. It's about them. As a salesperson, personally, I have a commitment never to sell something that I don't think they need or want because I want to be about them. As a speaker, I never wanted to say something that's egocentric or about me. It's got to be about them. Now, let's take that same principle and let's shift it over to the hospitality industry. It's not about you. It's about your guest. Mm -hmm. If you have a if you have rental that you rent out to people throughout the years, it's not about you. Okay, sure. Of course, you want some income from this, right? Of, of course, you're doing it in that sense for you. But if it's all about what you can get for you, then there's lots of ways for you to cut corners and not provide the best for them so that you can get more out of it. But ultimately, that's going to come back to haunt you. You might make money in the short term, but what are you really doing on the other end? So I would encourage you, turn it around, just like speakers should turn it around and say, what can I do for them? I was listening recently to a speaker and Will, oh my gosh, this guy got up and it was all about him. And he was bragging and just telling these stories. And you know what? There was some entertainment to it. It wasn't the worst thing ever, but he was mocked afterwards. What will people do towards you, say about you, when they've already experienced what you have to offer? Will they mock you and say, oh man, that place right there, that person right there? Or will they say, man, that person, that they provided a home or a service or whatever it might be, they provided something and had so much value. There might not initially be more money in that, but yeah. long-term, mm -hmm. there is. Because when you refresh others, you will find yourself refreshed. So the first strategy that I tell people about, not the first, but one of the strategies that I tell people about, and it's really relevant here, is it's not about you. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, from when I first started in the hotel side of things, whenever I was working the front desk, and I love using the front desk as an example, just because I think that is the hub of, you know, the property and, you know, the guests go there to do everything almost. Um, so with that, um, you really are on stage. And I like to use that metaphor because you're, you're giving a performance. You are showing your best self um, as well as if you are being selfish with that interaction and focusing on how you, the front desk agent or, you know, whoever um, can benefit, it's not going to be the best interaction. I've noticed that when I'm taking care of the guest for them, for, you know, what value can I bring for their stay, their experience, their time and money that they're choosing to spend with us, then that's when I've seen the value go over, you know, overflow in many aspects. You know, they want to come back. They want to, you know, shout out raving reviews on all social medias and review platforms. And, and then also they, they form a bond in a lot of ways. And I think that's what's beautiful about hospitality is that like you and I, Mike, we've, we've connected from a you know, very long time, uh, early stage of my life. And then, you know, we've kept that connection because in the same sense, you take the action of what can I bring to this person, not what can they bring to me. And so I think that's a great overall aspect for, you know, for young hospitality professionals, especially in the front desk and the guest service area, uh, really keeping the focus of them the guest, the team, the, the property as a whole, because then everything else in the end, it will come back and, and it'll be, you know, fruitful in many aspects. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's incredible what happens when you put yourself in the mind of being a giver. And there's a classic saying that I've always had, which is if you keep your hand tight fisted around what you have, then sure, nothing will escape, but nothing will come back in either. Mm -hmm. Versus if you hold your hands open and you say, I'm going to be a giver, I'm going to be serving my audience, I'm going to be serving the people that are my customers, my clients. And you, if you live your life with an open hand, then what happens is you might drop some things out and mm -hmm. some things might be taken from your hand, but your hand's also ready to receive. And so as a, as a speaker, as a hospitality leader, as a leader of any sort, we ought to live our lives in such a way that we're thinking about the other person and not about us. 
It's not about you. One of the best selling books across America in the last two decades started out with a simple line, it's not about you. And I remember reading that thinking, I need to learn how to live that way. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. And I think another good point in your book was you be you. That chapter itself, you know, really ties into not only just putting your best self, like kind of like how I use the analogy of being on stage, um, you know, putting your best self, best self forward, but you actually just being genuine, just being transparent and being, you not overanalyzing it and just, you know, knowing your weaknesses and your strengths and kind of how, how they are. Right. Yeah, UBU is is a huge part of of being a speaker first. So we'll go over there, mm-hmm. where we need to learn our uniqueness and live it out. And so, what makes you you? Well, it's all kinds of different attributes, right? It's not just one single thing. But one of the things that is really incredible is when you look at comedians. Those comedians have learned to embrace their uniqueness. They've learned to embrace their personhood. They've learned to embrace their uniquenesses that make them them there really aren't many comedians that try to be like someone else or it's actually part of their shtick. So you have a Jim Carrey he used to do a lot of physical comedy and would use all his body parts and kind of lanky. He had Dimitri Martin and he would use these random musical skills and Ellen DeGeneres uses her personal experiences and it goes on and on and on of all these different comedians. I make a list of some of these guys in, in my book. But what's unique to each one of them is that, or what's common to all of them, is that they're each being unique. Mm -hmm. They're each being themselves. And that really helps them get across their message. And often what I see people do in speaking is they start thinking they have to be like someone else. And the moment we get up on stage, we have to channel that inner mentor that used to be there. And we always used to watch him speak. In fact, as a pastor for many years, I would see different people who would follow in my footsteps and try to copy some of the ways that I would communicate, which makes sense. You're around someone for a long time. You'll start doing things like that person. And so I saw people do that. And that's okay at the beginning, but ultimately you need to branch out and find your own uniquenesses, your own special ways of doing things. Because if you're trying to be like me, or if I'm trying to be like someone else, or you're trying to be like a boss, or you're trying to be like your your previous manager, and you're trying to channel your energy to become like that person, then what happens? you miss out and they miss out on you. You also make it more difficult because you carry two weights anytime you get up in front of people and you lead or you teach. You carry the weight of content and you carry the weight of personhood. So you're up in front of people and those are the two weights that weigh you down. What's important to know is it's kind of like a front lateral raise. You know, when you're doing exercise, you put your uh, 10 pound weight in your hands and you hold them far apart, far out in front of you. And after a little while, it gets quite heavy and it's your arms start shaking and it starts burning. If you put both of them out there, both hands are shaking. Now you take those same weights, those 10 pound weights, you pull them deep into the chest and guess what happens? No big deal. It's just two 10 pound dumbbells. I can do that. But the further you get them away from your body, the further away from you that that weight is, the harder it's going to be for you to hold it up. Mm -hmm. Likewise, for you communicating or leading or being in front of people, the further away from you that you hold your persona, the harder it's going to be, the more stressful it's going to be, the more nervous it's going to be. But if you can hold that weight of speaking in front of people and having people look at you and having people's eyes and attention on you, and you can hold it close because you are being you, then guess what? It's a lot less nerve wracking. A lot of people get nervous because they feel like they have to be or embody or personify somebody else. And I wanna tell you, don't. You be you. So listen to Slick Talk, listen to whatever place that you need to, read those books, learn from some mentors and some coaches. Will is a great resource for you on that. And then take from these mentors and these leaders and these industry insight, and then apply it to your content through your personhood. So take that principle and don't just clone it, but be inspired by it so that you can be that person where you need to be. You be you. Now, now Will, this this happened around the time that you and I met. I was just really leaning into my Eunice. And I'd just become the the lead pastor. I was still being the the youth pastor as well. 
And right before you guys started joining, I had just gone through this season where I was trying to copy a whole bunch of preachers. Mm -hmm. And so every single week I was actually embodying someone else. And every single week I couldn't sleep on, on Saturday nights because I wasn't being myself. But once I learned into me, it was better for the audience, you, <laughs> and it was better for me because then I got to peace with myself. And you know, was I perfect? No, but part of you being you is also accepting who you are. Yeah. I couldn't agree more and kind of uh, to relate for, you know, for the audience, for a lot of listeners that have, you know, listened early on, my show is a lot different than it is now uh, or than it was back then because I think, you know, getting into the podcast world, I'm going to be hundred percent honest with everybody is that I had no idea what the hell I was doing, to be honest. Um, I just created something that I thought would be fun and exciting. And I was trying to copy other podcasts or trying to, you know, look in the mind of, you know, how can I be better than this podcast or whatever. And then, you know, there was a couple breaks in between from episodes and content and, you know, other stuff, but kind of like just what you said, Mike, is that, you know, the moment I embrace myself and, you know, who I am as a you know, hospitality professional and, and industry leader, I really, it became natural unless, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess the sound just became, you know, slick talking became what it is today. And so um, this aspect, after reading the book, um, it definitely clicked of, okay, now I know exactly like the, the weight scenario that you were, you were uh, explaining really just makes sense and it's, it's applicable. Right. Right. And, you know, there's one more strategy that I think is really applicable, but, on that, I think it's really cool to see you become more of who you are in your setting. And so it's really, I applaud you for that. You're modeling that for others. And for a lot of people, they try to be someone else and they're not comfortable. And so when I do this presentation, I often talk about really, there's three aspects, three actions that you should take towards yourself. One, you should appreciate yourself. And the reality is we should, we should take some things about our life and just go, you know, I appreciate that. I'm good at that. And it's a good type of pride. Mm -hmm. And after you appreciate, you accept. There are things that you don't really appreciate. It's not excited. But, but you know what? <laughs> I always tell, say this. We haven't seen each other for a little while, while Will. Mm -hmm. But uh, my hair is slowly, slowly fading away. <laughs> and there's nothing much I can do about it. And so I just need to accept that's what's going to be. And, and then the third one is improve. There are some things I can do to improve that look. Man, if I'm going to go bald, I'm going to rock it. You know? So I'm getting ready for that. And, and those are the three ways that we can look at our life. We can appreciate it. If you've got great hair, hey, appreciate it. If you're balding and you don't like it, accept it. It's happening. And then improve it. What can you do to make things a little bit better for yourself? Mm -hmm. If your leadership, let, now let's apply these to your leadership. There are some things that you're really great at. Appreciate it. There's some things that you're not great at. Maybe you're not naturally good at just striking up a conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, accept that part of who you are while also improving it. So improving is that exterior aspect. Accepting is things that you really can't change. Sometimes people accept what they should prove and they try to improve things that they need to accept. <laughs> Have you ever heard, seen someone try to keep their hair for way too long? And they're trying to improve their hairstyle, which what they really need to do is just accept that they've gone bald and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, often what we need to do is improve that which needs to be improved, accept that which needs to be improved instead of inversing them. And, and so for you, as you're thinking about this, as you're looking at your scenario, what is it that you can improve? What is it that you need to accept? What is it that you need to appreciate? Ultimately, how can you be you? 100%. And I think it also really ties into to another chapter in your book on just being in the moment. Um, yeah. A lot of the times, well, I'll use an example from a previous episode of um, Drew Glover, who is the uh, co-founder of Welcome, which is a welcome box where they do like services for, um, it's like an amenity box with snacks and soaps and shampoos and toothbrushes and all these cool stuff, right? And it, it's just a nice little thing for, um, you know, for guests. I like to use an example but they really emphasize the core mission of them is enhancing moments. And there's so many moments that we have in our life, a lot of mundane, simple day-to-day -day task moments, but there's 
an opportunity, and I love that about the hospitality side of things and the industry as a, a whole, is that we can take these simple moments, we can be in them and enhance them 10 times over just because we take the time to care and be in them and appreciate kind of like what you're saying and accept that, you know, these may be simple moments uh, in our life. Um, they may be really exciting moments in our life. Uh, I recently have, you know, left my full-time job to do the podcast and my business full-time. So with that, you know, it's, it's being in that moment, embracing it to a full extent. And I love just in the book, you know, when we're talking about speaking with no fear, I think that really the moment, you do all the things that we just kind of talked about and then finish it off with the cherry on the cake being just in the moment as a whole. That's right. when it gets beautiful and creative and just overall amazing. Right. Yeah. I want to go through one more yeah. and this is a great strategy as well for, for everybody to embrace. It's this do for one, what you wish you could do for all. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the book, I call it a little bit different. I say, speak to one. In the book, I'm talking about public speakers, and I paint the picture of a time where I was speaking to over 3,000 people in one room. And you can't speak to everyone, but you can speak to one. Mm -hmm. And you can speak to all as if you're speaking to one. So really one of my strategies in overcoming nervousness is get to know a few people because then it demystifies the crowd and turns them into the individuals that I'm communicating with. Yeah. So who can I talk to directly? Who can I talk to personally? Who can I, who can I get to know? And then really take that person and extrapolate that relationship to everyone. Likewise for leadership, do for one what you wish you could do for all. If you have a thousand customers, you can't personally interact with every single one. You can't know the names of every single person one, one but you can know a few. See, sometimes people will say, well, since I can't do it for everyone, I'm not going to do it for everyone, for anyone wrong mentality mm -hmm. do for one what you wish you could do for all and here's what happens your heart changes you become the type of person that really wants to serve and help that person and now they're not just products but they're people that you're really helping out with so if you learn to do for one what you wish you could do for everyone then people actually pick up on their attitude yeah, you might not know their name. You might not know all the details about them like you do someone else, but they'll see that you would you would if you could. Mm -hmm. So do for one what you wish you could do for all. Or if you're on stage, speak to one as though you were speaking to all or speak to all as though you were speaking to one. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and for, you know, the hospitality, you know, leaders and just – you know, industry people as a whole, I think this is huge because then your team, your front desk team or your server team or your busboy team or whatever team you have will see this. And it's incredible, the after effect and the, I guess my favorite thing is the ripple effect. You know, you skip a stone on a, a, a lake that's, you know, flat and calm. And then you see the ripple effect of when that rock hits the water. Uh, leading, you know, by example in that way is, is so Incredible, and you'd be amazed on what it does with the, the guest and team experience. So I, I love that tool. I love that trick. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, those are really the relevant ones that I think would be really great for, for the people that, that are listening right here. And I would love for people to pick up the book and just really see that it, it is a way that they can apply and put this into their own life. It's not just about speaking. I have a lot of people pick it up. So the book is Speak With No Fear. I'm Mike Acker. And then I wrote a new book. So if you're coming up with any meeting that you have to lead, you're getting ready for an interview, you're already getting ready for a podcast, you're getting ready to communicate in front of people, the second book is called Right to Speak. Right to Speak. Perfect. Where can people find you online? MikeAcker.com. In fact, if you just type in Mike Acker, that's A-C-K-E-R, <laughs> I will be the first page of Google search results. and then several more pages after you'll find me as well. Sure. And I do coaching for communication and some other types of coaching. I would love to provide that for anybody who just says, Hey, I want to up my game in communication. Yeah. For any listeners, uh, Mike has helped me in many aspects uh, with a couple of podcasts that recently were published. And so I definitely recommend it. I'll also put all the links, uh, you know, to the book, to Mike's site and to everything that I can into this episode. And you can follow it from, uh, whatever platform you're on, and then also on my website as well. Yeah, 
That's awesome. Sure. Great. Well, appreciate the, the time that you took and uh, for being on the show for anyone listening. Thank you for tuning in. This has been a fun episode for us to just catch up and also speak about what we're passion, passionate about. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you so much, Will. And for everybody who's listening, here's my last thoughts, right? Fear is going to hit in no matter what area. But there's a classic quote by Mark Twain that courage is not the absence of fear, but it's merely standing up to it. Hey, Amen. I love it. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Will. We'll talk to you soon. Right Thank you so much for listening. We love your support and want to provide the best we can to all our listeners. So please find us online, social media, and on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. What's up, everybody? If you've gotten this far into the episode of Slick Talk, the Hospitality Podcast, then you are amazing, and thank you so much for tuning in. We want to send you two places really quickly. If you can, check out the show notes and click the hospitality.fm link. Check out all of our other shows on the podcast network. And don't forget, if you have someone that you want to hear on the podcast, then fill out the guest fill-out form so that way we can get them on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy another episode of Slick Talk, the Hospitality Podcast. Podcast.